Enter Kansas City with Alexis, Rob, Courtney, and Lisa. And we're repurposing China cabinets. We have an expert showing us what to look for and what to avoid after the break. First Fridays are a perfect time to head to the West Bottoms for some fun antique shopping. But do you know what to look for in a quality piece of furniture to restore and reuse in your home? Courtney met Tam Stone for the lowdown. Well, buying and repurposing vintage furniture can be a little bit intimidating, but luckily we have an expert. I'm here with Tam Stone. Tam, there is so much to take into consideration when you're buying and repurposing vintage, vintage furniture. We're going to start with uh, this type of a piece. First and foremost, is it important to know who you're buying from? It can be. And that's where you're looking at what you're spending your money on. Mm -hmm. um, if you're dealing with a vetted dealer, their pieces are going to be vetted. And so you know when you're paying for something, you're actually getting what you're expecting. If it says it's a stickly piece of furniture, it really is, or a baker <laughs> piece of furniture, it really is. Yeah. Otherwise, it might be hit or miss, but you might be able to get something for a much less price that's still great quality that you can work with. So really, the dealer is important, but being able to know the signs of quality is even more important. So let's talk about the signs of quality. Let's talk about this piece here because yeah. there are lots of little tricks and tips that you were showing me beforehand to figure out because nowadays people can recreate a piece that looks old that's not actually old. So there right. are ways to make sure you're getting an authentic piece. So just kind of walk me through what you would do if you just walked up and you decided to purchase this piece. Yeah, okay, which I did. <laughs> I actually purchased this piece myself. This is a small tiny cabinet and this would have, you know, our homes were much smaller, um, you know, historically. Mm -hmm. And so this was a regular sized tiny cabinet. I'm planning to repurpose this and put it in a bathroom and put my bath linens in it and, you know, bath salts and stuff like that. So a whole different use for it. So you have to think creatively first of all. Um, when I look to purchase pieces like this, I first look to the price. This one is actually listed at $175, which to start with is a great deal. I see these kind of pieces for typically about $300, $350, $375. Mm -hmm. So I know that because I do this all the time and look around. So I knew right off the bat I had a good price and I was even able to negotiate something a little bit better. But when I looked at the quality of it, I looked for several things. I noticed that obviously this door is a little bit out of rack, mm -hmm. but I would expect that. That's consistent with the wear of the piece. I also went through and started looking at be the beautiful details that are on it that some often you don't see on furnishings today that are kind of plain line and transitional mm -hmm. looking. Great hardware that's good and solid and actually has the weight you would expect it to have. So if it feels light, it's probably a reproduction. Okay. Also, I look for things like dovetail joinery. Mm -hmm. And then on this particular drawer, when I pull it out, and it might be difficult to see, but you will have wear lines for right. the rails when things are going back in. So you need to look for things to be consistent with what you would expect time to do to a piece. It has nicks on the corners, but not ones that are just chunked right out of the middle where it might have been hit with a chain or something like that as opposed right. to, to be made, wear over time. You know, look old. Right, exactly. So this piece doesn't have any major structural flaws to it as far as it's not the leading tower piece of the whole thing. <laughs> right. We've got a little door that's a little bit out of rack, but that's about it. It's solid, it's sound. You can, I could paint it or I can just have it refinished in the dark mm -hmm. wood tone. And we were talking a little bit earlier about how brown wood has kind of been out. Yeah. Um, but it's making a resurgence. So when you're thinking about painting, also think about just refinishing to a beautiful natural finish because as a designer, I'll tell you that that's starting to make a real strong comeback. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And real quickly, Tam, you're going to put this in your bathroom. You're yes. going to have your towels. It'll be beautiful. But you could use this in a nursery. There are all kinds of fun things you could do with a piece like this. Yeah, it could be a bookcase. Because it's so small in scale and our homes are so much larger, it becomes much more of an accent piece. So it could be something that would hold stationery. It could be a bookcase, like you said, a baby's nursery with clothes or something like that. All kinds of things. Just get creative with not thinking about it as a china cabinet, which mm -hmm. we don't see in homes often these days. Some great ideas for using that china cabinet in your home.